My child arrived just the other day. He came into the world in the usual way, but there were planes to catch. channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review last month I received an email from John Hubbard of Huntsville Alabama he asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing a fountain pen he had designed and had 3d printed he told me of his background as an engineer for the control system design of the Apollo Saturn 5 rocket of course my tech brain went into overdrive and I put NASA, Apollo, and the Saturn V, and Huntsville, and Alabama together, and I was immediately intrigued. He explained that after a 30 plus year career working in engineering and computer aided design systems, he began to restore fountain pens. And as the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon approached in 2019, John collaborated with a team of 3D printing experts to design, develop, and manufacture this. 3D printed moonwalk fountain pen to commemorate the event. He didn't want a sticker or a screen print on top of an ordinary pen. He wanted the user to have a tactile experience with the pen. And the result is an amazing 3D printed hand painted fountain pen. So start the countdown as we explore this fascinating pen in three, two, one. I think this will be one of the more unusual pen unboxings I've ever done. Uh, you see, a short time ago, I received a, an email from a John Hubbard of Huntsville, Alabama. And he gave me a long story about how he was interested in 3D printed pens and had developed his own. Uh, and he had some history with NASA and the, the Apollo uh, moon missions back in the late 60s and had fashioned and designed a pen to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the first man on the moon in 1969. Now, I won't go into the details now. I will do that when I do the review of this pen, but it's fascinating stuff. So I've received the pen and it contained this envelope and it says the moonwalk pen and in it is a letter from John which uh, says congratulations on your purchase and there's a bunch of information here I will share with you and the letter says best regards John John Hubbard moonwalk pen at jehubbard.com so it comes in this lovely cardboard box with a little bit of a ribbon around it and here is the pen it's in a rickshaw bag which is very nice this isn't just for me this is how John ships his pens in a rickshaw bag with this astronaut's moon print and I believe that's uh, that might be Buzz Aldrin's print I'm not sure it might be uh, uh, Armstrong's print but I know that Buzz was doing the the photography with Hasselblad camera on the moon that day in, Ju in July of 1969 um, I was just a kid but I was following it with bated breath uh, this is very nice this moon print and well before I open the pen let's take a look at what's in here there's a card with the moonwalk pen and his address in Huntsville Alabama those of you who are aficionados of uh, the Apollo missions will know that Huntsville Alabama has a special place in the Apollo program and when I saw Huntsville I thought uh, I, I saw the connection immediately nice little note from John thank you for your order and a couple of uh, standard international ink cartridges and a sticker that says writers gotta write ain't that the truth and we're going to take a look at this pen here it comes a 
and there it is look at that it's very light it's 3d printed uh, plastic it is a pull cap and there is the number six size yovo steel nib this one is in a fine but the 3d nature of this is quite remarkable it's a combination of painting and texture those raised bits are a little bit white and the darker bits are lower in elevation so you actually get the feeling like you're landing on the crater and the pen does post whoo look at that nicely deeply and securely and it's got a nice girth to it but i'm really looking forward to inking that pen up and giving it a try and thanks go out to john hubbard for providing this pen for review and what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample and after the writing sample please stay tuned as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen but first we're going to do a brief history lesson for those of you who couldn't care less what happened in the world before last week or think that the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Hell no! German? Forget it, he's rolling. You may skip ahead now. And now, on with the show. And now that they are gone, I can tell you all what I think of them. Hello. 0.2. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. The Apollo program is endlessly fascinating to me. And knowing that Armstrong took his first steps on the moon 53 years ago last Wednesday makes me feel very old indeed. <laughs> and yet it feels like it was yesterday. I was 13 in 1969, and I had my Time magazine moon map laid out on my mahogany library desk as I plotted every moment of the adventures of Collins, Aldrin, and Armstrong. My parents allowed me to stay up late to watch Neil Armstrong walk down the ladder of the Lem and put his foot on the moon at 3 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on July 20th, 1969. That we were watching live images is still astounding to me, and I remember being as gobsmacked as Walter Cronkite was at the time. <laughs> For a pretty good overview of the race to the moon and the men who pioneered space travel, Tom Wolfe's book, The Right Stuff, is an entertaining read, and the film adaptation is excellent as well. Mr. Menace, what is this called? A crash helmet? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I'm currently reading Douglas Brinkley's exhaustive tome called The American Moonshot which should be on every space enthusiast reading list. The skinny on the history is that in eight short years from May 25th, 1961, when Kennedy told Congress the U.S. was going to the moon, to the landing of the Eagle in the Sea of Tranquility on July 20th, 1969, the United States was able to mobilize its considerable resources, scientific and engineering talents. Just eight short months after Kennedy's charge in February 1962, NASA hurled astronaut John Glenn into orbit atop a converted intercontinental ballistic missile, the Atlas LV-3B rocket. But the Atlas was just a firecracker alongside Werner von Braun's massive Saturn V rocket, which launched 12 Apollo missions, as well as Skylab 1, and dwarfed even the mighty space shuttle. This enormous rocket was the most complex machine ever built by man to that point, and was principally designed by the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Measuring a dizzying 363 feet, it was taller than the Statue of Liberty. Weighing in at an incredible 6.5 million pounds, the three stages of the Saturn V had thrust of 9.3 million pounds combined. On July 14, 1969, the 9.3 million pounds of thrust shot the three astronauts, Commander Neil Armstrong, Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin, and Command Module Pilot Michael Collins into low Earth orbit. After a couple of orbits around the Earth, Saturn V's third stage was fired again, and Apollo 11 reached Earth escape velocity at 25,000 miles per hour to slip the surly bonds of Earth's gravity towards the moon called Translunar Injection, or TLI. 
Command Module Pilot Michael Collins then disengaged the Command Module named Columbia from the third stage, turned it around, and docked it with the Lunar Excursion Module, the LEM, named the Eagle. The Eagle was pulled from the compartment above the third stage and paired. The two vehicles went on to the Moon, where the Saturn V third stage went on past the Moon and into orbit around the Sun, where I think it still remains today. Approximately three days later, Columbia and Eagle passed behind the Moon, and Columbia fired its engine to bring it into lunar orbit. Armstrong and Aldrin moved into the Eagle and separated from Columbia for the descent to the lunar surface. During the landing sequence and 6,000 feet above the moon, the two astronauts received a series of 1201 and 1202 computer alarms, which indicated the computer was overloaded, trying to process commands. This was actually the result of both the landing and rendezvous radars being switched on at the same time by accident, and the computer was trying to make sense of an overload of data. Armstrong determined that they were going to overshoot their landing zone by miles and surveyed the ground ahead with strewn with boulders. With only seconds of fuel left in the descent engine, Armstrong manually guided the Eagle to a soft landing and declared, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Approximately six hours later, Armstrong descended the ladder from the LEM and set foot on the moon, declaring, That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Fifty-three years ago, he pushed his moon boot into the lunar soil and made an indelible impression on millions of human beings as well as the footprint in the moon that still remains there today. And it is this legacy and his personal involvement and experience in the development of the Saturn V rocket at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama that John Hubbard brings to this amazing fountain pen. He's commemorating some amazing old technology that propelled man into space and to the moon with some of the newest technology in 3D printing today. Armstrong's footprint and the moon crater are the most compelling features of the textured surface of this pen. Let's look at it in detail now. Welcome back all of you history haters. Overall, it's a relatively large cigar-shaped pen with no clip. The plastic texture is quite pronounced and tactile, and the pen is very light in the hand. Having had some experience with 3D printing, with my son's printing my Ink Buddy designs in his 3D print shop called Allied Armors, I can tell immediately that this is some quality work. I gave this to James to examine, and he was greatly impressed with the design and workmanship. The printing is not only at a very high resolution. The higher the resolution, the less you'll see the print lines. These materials come out of the printer rough, as you can see from one of John's photos of the pen parts right off the printer. Those extra structures attached to the barrel and the cap are called support material, which keeps the resin from sagging while it's soft. All of that needs to be removed, the resin needs to be cured, and then hand sanded and painted. The rounded top cap has some moon craters on it, and the texture you see here is really rough to the touch, which is a good thing. If we look closely, we can see the plastic texture is painted with two colors, gray and silver, to accentuate the light and dark and high and low relief. This is very, very well done. John sent me photos of how the plastic looks right after it's been printed. You might be able to feel that texture, but it certainly doesn't look like much. The hand painting makes all the difference here. There's no clip, but the crater is raised from the surface so much that it acts as a natural roll stop. There's a one millimeter step down from the cap to the barrel, which is straight to the cigar shaped end finial and a small round hole in the bottom and Armstrong's footprint is very pronounced and deep. John has certainly made this pen to be felt. The other side of the barrel has a portion of the inscription on the plaque left on the Eagle Lander on the moon. It says, we came in peace for all mankind. And again, this is not just painted on. These letters are deeply cut into the surface. The cap pulls off to reveal a good size section and a black Franklin Christoph Yovo number six size steel nib. John avoided making a threaded cap as he wanted the user to be able to align the cap crater and the footprints as they see fit. The silicone o-ring here allows for the cap to be secure and keep from spinning when closed. And there's a small flare towards that black nib. I like the added touch of the black nib. It really 
sets off this pen nicely. The nib has some scroll work, the Franklin Kristoff uh, logo that's laser etched, and an F for fine, and a plastic feed. The nib and the plastic feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for swapping, maintenance, and cleaning. The section is a nice size and very, very comfortable in the hand. The section unscrews to reveal the included Schmidt K5 Standard International Converter. And this pen will accept one Standard International cartridge in the command module and one in the LEM. And the inside of the cap shows a step that meets up with the section to seal the nib from evaporation. The cap posts deeply and very securely and makes the posted pen very nicely balanced, especially as the cap is nearly weightless. See what I did there? Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably. You can learn more about the Moonwalk pen from John's website, moonwalkpen.com. John also has a lovely YouTube video where he explains the pen and the methods he used to design and manufacture it. I'll put a link to that video in the description. This fountain pen is $235 US and the rollerball version is $195 US. The pens come in a Moonprint Rickshaw Bagworks pen sleeve included at no extra charge. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Moonwalk 3D printed pen with my other 3D printed pen, the Platypus Model 10 by Michael Liu of Australia, a Fullywen 017, a Ranga 4C, and a Fullywen Ancient Civilizations. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see the Ranga gets very, very long indeed. And this Fullywen nib right here on the Fullywen 017 was personally ground by Mr. Doodlebud himself. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. And of course there's a huge weight difference here as well. The Fullywen Ancient Civilizations probably weighs more than three or four of these Moonwalk pens. And now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Moonwalk three D printed fountain pen and it has a fine steel number six size nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet for a fine nib and the nib is very very smooth with some feedback. Very nice. And the ink today is J. Urbain Stormy Gray. And here are some close matches to the Stormy Gray from inkswatch.com. And as to line variation, well, it's fairly stiff, but you can squeeze a little bit of line variation out of it. And the line this nib makes is 0 0.4 millimeters, which makes it a Western, between a Western extra fine and fine, or a Japanese fine. And for our quote, and some reverse writing. It's very dry, but it's actually fairly smooth. And some quick writing. No issues whatsoever keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? 
It's difficult to compare this pen with anything because it's so unique. The combination of the history of the Apollo 11 mission, John's connection to the Saturn V program, and the fantastic modern design and 3D printing technology that makes this a truly remarkable and unique fountain pen. If you're a nut for paraphernalia about space flight, this pen just sitting on your desk would be a space tech geek's prize possession. But it writes too. It's well balanced, light and comfortable in the hand, has a fantastic girthy section, and a great black Yovo number no. 6 size nib. You know that there are people out there who want to make a pen to commemorate historical events and sell them to celebrate history. But they usually don't know the first thing about pens. Mostly they'll make ball points and roller balls. They'll buy cheap pens and put stamps or silk screen paintings on the pen and call it a day. God forbid they want to make a fountain pen. You know what they'll do. They'll purchase a bunch of Jinhao X450s and put stickers on them or spray paint them or something. Well, actually a Jinhao X450 would be the best case scenario in that case. At least it's a decent pen. But John didn't want that in his fountain pen. And that's why I think his pricing is fair for the quality you're getting. Not only in the working parts of the pen, but in the design and finishing details, and especially in how the pen feels in the hand. You can tell that the designer knows his fountain pens, and what we fountain pen geeks like and don't like. And this geek loves this pen, and no, I won't be giving this one away. This represents a lot of hard work and the investment of a lot of personal care and attention. I very much appreciate receiving this pen for review, and I send my heartfelt thanks to John for sending it to me and also for his contribution to one of history's most amazing human achievements, putting human beings on the moon. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. And you can also join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month. And I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section. And you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you. for watching and that's all she wrote I made this